Hello, everybody. Uh, I am a professor of uh, computer engineering at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. I was uh, up until uh, August uh, the rector of the university. And now I'm on uh, sabbatical at the University of uh, Pennsylvania in the U.S. I'm uh, also the president of the Black Sea University Network, a uh, network of about 115 universities, uh, including the University of Belgrade, uh, in 12 countries around the Black Sea uh, region. Uh, so with uh, that background, um, I have uh, some experience to talk about uh, the subject. But uh, Lisa Petri uh, Petridis made me realize that uh, my perspective is uh, limited to higher education, and that uh, this is true. So towards a student-centered education, towards a student-centered higher uh, education, uh, I should correct uh, myself. So um, uh, the audience uh, in higher education are uh, the millennials. Um, a generation uh, born around the beginning of uh, 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 the century. And uh, they have uh, distinct uh, uh, characteristics uh, because this is the first generation that was born in uh, uh, the digital world. Uh, they uh, uh, are ethnically and ras racially diverse because people move uh, around uh, much more uh, often. Uh, they are uh, more progressive, uh, the most uh, tech advanced, advanced uh, generation uh, ever. They not only use technology, but they're willing, and they are doing it, uh, uh, they're willing to advance it uh, as well. They believe education uh, through technology is a big factor to achieving success in life. And uh, this is true for the majority of uh, young people uh, today. Uh, which uh, see themselves as global citizens eager to contribute to the welfare of uh, society and, uh, and the world. Uh, and they take on uh, uh, social uh, issues uh, and they, have, they, they take a stand. Uh, they learn foreign languages, they interact, they travel much easier, much uh, on, a, on a moment's uh, notice. Uh, and this is especially true for uh, uh, areas like the European, uh, like Europe, European Union and, uh, and um, uh, the US. So all, the, all these uh, characteristics make them uh, want flexibility in their uh, education uh, as well. They believe that the answer and the path uh, uh, to success is uh, education, so we have to uh, deliver. Uh, a few years back, actually five years back, I was attending one of those uh, mega conferences in, in Brussels on innovation, uh, innovation convention, thousands of people in uh, uh, sessions, and there was, of course, one session on uh, uh, innovation on education. Uh, opened by Chris Patton of Barnes, the Chancellor of Oxford University, with a, a huge experience in other positions too. Um, he defended the uh, large educational institutions like his university. Uh, back then, MOOCs were uh, uh, a, a, a trendy thing, so he uh, uh, specifically said uh, universities will not be MOOCed down. Um, we have nothing to fear if we uh, pro continue to provide quality education. Interestingly enough, the next speaker to him was Anne-Marie Maffidon. Then, uh, I think, uh, I believe he was, she was about 20 years old. Uh, she had uh, just received a, a master's in mathematics, the youngest female student at her 19th uh, years of age to, uh, to receive uh, uh, such a degree, a genius. So she said, we want to be able to learn anything, anytime, anywhere, at our pace, at our place. <laughs> and of course, this strategy will work for geniuses. Uh, the average student may want or may need a more structured uh, uh, program of study, some, uh, some guidance, 
but it is true that students come better prepared, better educated uh, to, to college. And they have the ability to learn from many different uh, sources outside or besides in parallel to, uh, to class. Technology uh, makes uh, all these uh, uh, modes of, of learning uh, possible. So technology is good for education because it uh, generates uh, an, an environment where uh, knowledge is accessible, ubiquitous, abundant, uh, at the, uh, our fingertip, coming on a display of a uh, small or medium or large uh, device. New devices, new tools, new platforms for, for learning uh, everywhere. And of course, it uh, comes with uh, some risks, uh, uh, like we are more machine dependent for every uh, piece of, uh, of knowledge. We don't uh, uh, memorize uh, anything uh, anymore. Uh, we can no, I mean, kids or students can no longer uh, remember the big dates of history or places of, uh, of history, and we consider it uh, a deficiency. Probably it's not. Uh, many phases of, uh, of education uh, have uh, been uh, discussed uh, in, uh, in this conference uh, and uh, in other conferences on, on education. Um, distant learning, lifelong learning, uh, e-learning, e uh, MOOCs, uh, webinars, uh, and they make, uh, they enable what I call the multiple windows to student-centered uh, ed education, um, in which mobility, transferability of uh, learning experiences and uh, virtual reality uh, make this flexible lifelong uh, learning uh, a, a reality. Um, I don't think I need to give uh, definitions to flexible uh, learning, but I get uh, students, uh, as I said, I teach in a five-year uh, uh, combined uh, bachelor's and master's di uh, diploma of engineering program that requires students to take about 60 classes. They're all science and engineering. And yet, there are students who take an additional 10 MOOCs from uh, uh, places like uh, Stanford or, or, or MIT uh, to uh, add on to their, uh, to their curriculum. I had a student uh, uh, who came to me last year with a topic that students have to do a, a thesis, a diploma thesis, uh, in their final semester. So a student came to me with a, a subject for his thesis, which was so advanced that even after he finished it, I'm, st I'm still not certain I understand the, uh, the, uh, the, f uh, the f whole thing. He had gone to uh, Montreal and worked to, uh, with a machine learning uh, research center, a famous machine learning uh, research center, and he came back with, uh, with all that uh, knowledge. So students, in, uh, especially in computer science, computer engineering, they, they may know more than uh, what we uh, know as, uh, as, uh, as teachers. And uh, a, a, another example is, is the course that I have to teach uh, next semester in, uh, at, the, at UPenn. It's a mas machine learning on, uh, uh, for life sciences. I'm fascinated and terrified at the same time because uh, it's a subject that will allow me to learn and teach new things that uh, uh, were discovered in the last uh, five or six years, but uh, I may have uh, students who know more than I do in the, in, in the class. What do I do? So all these, do they uh, signal the end of traditional university as we know it? Not really, of course, but micromasters, nano degrees, one-off classes, specialization are all justifiable. Should we follow the others in the business uh, rather than copying Stanford or MIT? Uh, we should ask, what does my institution do better than any other? Where do we have the expertise? And then focus on that and avoid uh, a situation where local universities will uh, simply become educational service providers uh, for, uh, for other countries. Uh, this is certainly the case in Greece, where we see a lot of our graduates leave out of the country, this is certainly the case for, uh, for Serbia and other, other uh, uh, countries uh, in the world. Um, several uh, concepts will shape the future of education during the next uh, 20 years, but they all 
uh, can be summed up to uh, flexibility. And uh, these are 10 characteristics of student-centered experiences. Uh, rather than analyzing all of them, I will repeat uh, going um, uh, uh, from uh, upper uh, left corner uh, counterclockwise. Anytime, anywhere, feedback from my partners in learning, students can get that. All of my artifacts as a student are archived in shared multimedia records, open uh, education uh, records, uh, like Lisa Petridis uh, said. All of the world's thinkers are connected to me and I can uh, gain from their uh, collective knowledge. And all of the world's knowledge uh, is at my fingertips. Uh, I will uh, part you with two disturbing thoughts. Uh, Brain-machine interface. It will be a major disruptor to education, especially higher education. There is progress in all fronts. We don't know how this is going to evolve. and We don't know how uh, the brain will be able to download some information and knowledge from, uh, uh, from the machine, from uh, the computer. And the second disturbing thought is uh, we in this conference and similar conferences, we can all talk the talk, we can all analyze the situation. Uh, I doubt if any oh, one of us, and with uh, uh, the exception of those uh, who are younger, below 40, 45 years of age, I doubt if any one of us can walk the walk. I doubt if any one of us can imagine a class without a teacher. Nobody can take ourselves uh, out of the uh, out of the picture but that's what we need to do thank you